it's interesting when he was polling you guys. Um, whenever we poll rooms, it's always like, you know, how many people are intermediate? A bunch of people raise their hands. How many people are beginner? A bunch of people raise their hands. They go, how many people are advanced? And like, one guy tentatively is like, maybe, kind of, I am, whatever. Now, some it's a bit of a different crowd, so there might be a few more advanced guys here. But even here, um, my guess is a lot of you guys are not 100% satisfied with where you're at with game. Like, maybe you are able to pull girls up to a certain caliber, like the sixes and sevens, but then you, know, you get to that nine, that 10, and you're like, it's just not working so well. And the stuff that was working for me before maybe isn't working at that level, and what's going on, and I'm confused. Or maybe you go out and you do pull, but at the end of the night, after you take a girl home, you're like, well, I'm not really quite sure how that happened. That was fun. I'd like to do it again. Not quite sure how, right? Um, and the difference to me between intermediate game and advanced game is knowing really what's going on and being the one that's in control of the situation, not the one that's like out there hoping to get lucky or hoping the girl likes you, where you're truly flipping the script and you're the one that's in the buyer frame and she's selling herself to you. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys and teach you guys right now how to do a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's a little different. What you need to do to get from beginner to intermediate is categorically different from what you need to do to get too advanced. Um, so first of all, what does intermediate look like? Intermediate looks like you go out and you do a lot of sets. And some of them like you and some of them don't. And you know, you're like, oh, well, maybe I wasn't in state, or maybe you know, she was just at a weird moment or whatever. But you're not really sure. You just know, you know some sets work well, some sets don't. And there's a correlation. When you're in a better mood, it works better. Um, sometimes your opener's a little better. Uh, if they're not really busy, if they're not really doing anything, it opens better. But you don't know exactly why or how. And then sometimes you're taking girls home, sometimes you're not. But it feels like there's a lot of luck going on. It's a lot of a crapshoot. And your consistency is not there. Like, how many people here um, sleep with girls, like, maybe, like, I don't know, once a month or something like that? About that? All right? Less than once a month? All right? Who's that, like, once a week? Few of you. All right. Few of you guys. All right. But not a ton. All right? Not a ton of guys there. How many of people have, like, multiple girls a week? Like, almost nobody. Oh, shit. A couple of people. Nice. Nice. Um, so that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different level of like, when you go out, you actually get a result when you want to. And that's what I want to get you guys to, right? And so the things that'll get you to intermediate are not making big fuck ups and giving yourself a chance, right? It's getting yourself out there. So if you get out and you approach a lot of girls, you're genuinely cool, are generally cool, and you actually make moves to, to push things forward, what'll happen? Certain girls will be down for it, certain girls won't, right? And the girls that are down for it, you end up sleeping with the girls that aren't you end up, uh, didn't work out for whatever reason, All right? Advanced game is when you get to pick and choose a little bit better, right? Or when the girl's not that into you at the start, but you're like, well, I like this girl, I wanna make this happen, and you know how to convey your personality and you know how to create the situation where she will stick around for you to convey your personality in such a way that you can actually make something happen there, right? And it's also a situation where when the girl does like you, this is a hallmark of intermediate, you get the girl to like you, you get attraction, but you have all these problems with logistics, all these problems with the friends, all these problems with last minute resistance, all that kind of stuff, right? Advanced game is when you get her chasing. Um, this, is, this isn't how all my sets go, but this is an example of what advanced game looks like. Uh, when I was in London uh, a while ago, uh, I was talking to these three German girls. This one girl really, really liked me. Her friends kind of let her be with me most of the night, but then at the end of the night, they're like, okay, we gotta go. Turns out they had a flight back to Germany in something like four or five hours. And that was the reason, like, yeah, we have to go to Germany, whatever. It's so like, hey, what, you know, whatever the girl's name was, hey, you gotta, you know, come with us, etc. And she's like, she gets up, stands up, looks him straight in the eye, and says, no, I'm good here. I'll figure it out. You can go. And literally just sends her friends home because she's made her decision. Okay, that's a whole different level. That's a different level of game where she's actually chosen you and she's willing to do work to make it happen. And that's what I want to get you guys to. Okay? So beyond that like hoping and praying and maybe it'll happen to I understand where I'm at, I understand where I'm going, I know what the next step is, and I know if it goes wrong what I'm doing about it. All right, so how do you get to intermediate? Do lots of approaches, play a numbers game. You have a pretty fun vibe and you show intent. If you do those things, you will get results. Right? You will sleep with girls if you do that, pretty much period. Right? You might not sleep with the type of girls you want to, and you might be very, very wildly inconsistent, but you will get results. All right. 
The question is, why is it that most guys don't get past the intermediate? Why is it that most guys don't get to that advanced level where they have choice and where the girl are ch girls are chasing? Well, there are basically two factors. Factor number one, inner game and being in a good mood is great, but it will only take you so far. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys think that if you got yourself in a really, really good, amazing focus move and got a mood and got a really good warm up on, you could go beat Roger Federer at tennis? How many people think they could do that? Yeah? All right, cool. How many people think if you, you know, got a really good night's sleep, you had your coffee, you got really focused and you got really like positive thoughts about you, you could go to Cedar sinai and go perform heart surgery? Unless there's a heart surgeon in the room, I assume not many of you, right? So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the fact that attitude is great and a good attitude and good outlook will help you do everything better, but it won't let you do anything all by itself, okay? Good attitude helps with everything, but a good attitude won't get you skill. Right? I think to myself, when I was first learning game, 18 years old, I could be in the best mood of my life. I could be the most positive, happy, I could have had a great event happen to me. I still, back then at 18, 19, 20, could not even come close to touching what I can do on my worst night now. Right? And what's the difference? It's 16 years of skill. Right? 16 years of learning, growing, um, building up understandings, building up skill, building up technique, to the point that even at my absolute worst, I can do better than I would have at my best. Okay, so there's the thing: inner game, um, and state, and you know, great positive mental attitude, self amusement, all that stuff. It'll take you to a certain point, and it's amazing. It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. I fully endorse and I'm in favor of it. But it will only take you so far. Beyond a certain level, you need actual technique. Next thing is something I call leveling. And this is absolutely huge. Who here knows what leveling is? Show of hands. A couple of people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is something that um, the more and the deeper I get in game, I'm starting to think this is like everything. Like leveling is everything in game. So I'm gonna explain to you kind of what leveling is. A little bit of a long-winded um, explanation, but stick with me, okay? So leveling is something I learned from playing poker, all right? In playing poker, what happens is um, you learn incrementally. So when you first start out playing poker, you look at your cards and you can kind of figure out if your hand's good and that's about it. You're like, oh, I have a good hand or I have a bad hand. And you're like, oh, I'll bet a lot because I have a good hand. That's as far as you're thinking. And at first, if nobody else can figure out if their hand's good and you can figure it out, you'll probably win. Then you get to a point where it's a little more sophisticated. Everybody can figure out if their hand's good. So now you have to go deeper. Now you have to go like, okay, is my hand good? And then is his likely hand, the other guy you're playing against, is his likely hand good? Right? And that's one level deeper. And if you can think on that level, you'll beat anyone who's a level down. Right? And then everyone can get there. You go another level up. And you say, OK, is my hand good? Is his hand good? And then you say, does he think, um, what does he think I have? Does he think my hand is good? Right? And so you're thinking a level deeper and a level deeper and a level deeper. And every time you level up, you're going to completely obliterate the person that's playing one level below you. Does that kind of make sense? OK? Now, when you're playing poker, um, most of the time you have to sit with someone for a long time to figure out how they play. But there are certain things they can do, like certain hands where when they play that hand, you know exactly what level they're on. Like they play a hand a certain way and you're like, that guy's thinking about his hand and my hand, but he is not thinking any deeper. And as soon as you figure that out, you automatically can just beat that guy every single hand for like the rest of your session. And you just own him for life, okay? So once you figure that out, you own him. You know exactly what level he's at, okay? Now, it's kind of a long-winded approach to explaining this, but the same thing happens in game, where there are certain things you do that tell the girl exactly what level you're at. Okay? And I'll give you guys some examples. Uh, one example is, say that uh, the girl's walking down the street, and you run up really fast, jump in front of her, and go, hey, stop. Okay? Now think about that behavior. On one hand, that says you're assertive, says you're confident, it says you either don't have a whole ton of approach anxiety or at least you have enough conviction and like something about yourself to get over your approach anxiety. So it says you're not a super low value guy, right? You're not like a, you're not like a four or a five or a two. You're, you're a decently high value guy. I'd say like six or a seven, at least something like that, right? On the other hand, it says very convincingly you are not a nine or a 10. Because think to yourself, could you imagine George Clooney doing that? Absolutely not. It doesn't make sense. And so here's the real mind fuck of game. Say you do a behavior that levels you at about an eight, right? It puts you at like level eight in the girl's eyes. Well, a girl who's a six or a seven, she would dream of a guy who's an eight. That's her ideal. 
Because every girl wants a guy that's just a level or two above her, right? Just a little bit like better than her, but attainable enough that she feels comfortable, right? A girl that's a six does not want a guy who's a 10 because that's scary. That's terrifying for her because she thinks he'd cheat on her all the time. So if you talk to a girl that's like a seven and you go in and do something that's leveling at an eight, it's an honest indicator, an honest signal that you're at an eight, she will absolutely love you for it. And in fact, she might get immediately attracted to you. She might get turned on. Quite possibly, she might even compliment you after the, you might have sex with her and she'll be like, you know, I loved your opener. I, or she won't say opener, but like, <laughs> she'll be like, I loved the way you came up and talked to me, right? So, and so it's, it's, you're like, oh my God, that's good. I've learned that thing. It's, I've mastered opening because I did this thing. And then you're like, okay, so I got the opener down. I'll get all these other things down. And then you start going and talking to the girls that are nines and tens. And all of a sudden, your results just completely dry up. And what's happening? Instead of the girl being immediately attracted because of your opener, she's immediately turned off and dismissive because of your opener. Because your opener, again, indicated very solidly that you're at an eight, not a 10, right? So it's a huge mind fuck because what'll get you to a certain level will not get you to the next level, right? And a lot of guys learn these gimmicky approaches or they learn these like specific little, little techniques that are they're very like, they work in a particular context, but they don't work overall. Right? So you have to be very, very careful about leveling. I'm going to talk a lot more about that as the speech goes on, but be aware of that concept. That is one of the biggest things you can do in game. And if you're, you're getting intermediate results and not advanced results, there's a very high likelihood that you're doing tons and tons of things in your game that are leveling. Um, and I'm actually going to show you guys right now some very common student mistakes that are leveling behaviors. Okay? So these are going to, this is going to be some student infield, um, things I've seen guys do on a regular basis. All right. So the first mistake I want to show you guys is approaching from the wrong angle. All right? Sounds highly, highly technical. A lot of people think, oh, if I'm just in a good mood, doesn't matter, whatever. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Number one, approaching from a 90 degree angle and the girl coming in the girl's peripheral vision, it's very likely to startle her, very likely to put her off and give you a bad re reaction. Also, jumping in front of the girl, like what I mentioned, very, very likely to feel invasive and give a bad reaction. So have a look at a couple examples of that. Hey, hey, are you English? No. no I'm sorry. I, I saw you were really English. I say hi. Hi. What's your name? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You seem on a mission. You're just like, you're running away from me. You're in a rush. Uh, um, so here's like a couple examples. They get, they're actually not really bad game, but it's examples of like being a little bit too much in the girl's party and in, in the girl's frame. Instead of trying to like bring your party and offer value, it's too much being about her. And these aren't really super, super bad, but they're just subtly low value in, in their way. All right, so you can see again, right? It's, it's just like too invested in the girl. If you're too invested in the girl, what does that say to her? Higher value, you're not used to talking to girls, it'd be a big deal for you if, if it went well, any of those kind of things, right? It's very, very important what you're conveying. In fact, the way I look at it, so the whole like self-amusing and continuing to talk and fun, fun frame, all that kind of stuff, those are all great. I look at those all as a means to an end, okay? The end is the story you're telling the girl about yourself, right? Your goal in game, this is very important, like if you're taking notes, write this down. Your goal in game is to tell her the story of you. And specifically, it's to tell her the story of your attractive qualities, right? So going in and being very fun and having good energy, it's great, but it's a means to an end. It's a means to having her enjoy the interaction enough to stick around and find out the cool things about you. If in amusing, if, if in self-amusing and in keeping her around, you're saying low value things about yourself or you're saying unattractive things about yourself, you're actually being counterproductive. Does that make sense? So all those things are a means to an end. The story you're telling is the end. All right, next is not committing to the set. All right, another massively common student mistake. All right. <laughs> So that's a case of, well, the, the second one's just a bad set. The first one is a, set, a case where the set was totally good, but he just tried to close a little too fast, right? And that's, that's just impatience. Um, and that can happen a lot as well. Um, to be fair, though, I would much rather like, close too fast than the mistake that most guys make, which is not closing at all, right? But again, it's something that, that can be a leveling behavior from time to time. Okay. Um, so those are examples of a lot of very common mistakes. And what you notice about all those mistakes, they don't have a lot to do with vibe or attitude. They're specific technical things that are very, they're fixable, 
right? If you know where you're at in a particular set, you can fix that, you can have the right technique and do the right thing, whether you're in a good mood or not in pretty much any of those cases. All right, um, so the big thing that I look at is game is a skill, right? Like any other skill. Um, and it's developed the exact same way. So a lot of times, have any of you guys seen my infield breakdowns like online or Valentine University, day game, and that kind of stuff? All right, okay. So my infield breakdowns, basically I you know, meet a girl, go from start to finish, and I break down exactly what I'm thinking the whole time, that kind of stuff. Whenever I do those in front of audiences, um, it's very common that someone asks me, are you really thinking about all that stuff in set? Is all that really going through your mind? And the obvious answer is what? I guess it's not an obvious answer. Most people say no. The answer is yes. It actually is all going through my mind. But here's the crazy thing. Do you know what's not going through my mind? All the shit that you guys are thinking about. Okay? All the shit you guys are thinking about is not going through my mind and that's why I have the mind space available for all of that. And here's how. This is how skill is learned, sort of at a mastery level. Um, the best example I can give for this is how people learn sports. So imagine, for example, you are going to learn tennis. Right? You're going to learn tennis. First, what do you do? You just spend hours and hours and days and weeks just learning how to hit the ball the right way. You're not even worried so much about like whether it goes in the court or not. You're not even worried so much about like what side of the court, whatever. You're just like literally just getting the stroke perfect, right? Because if you, if you don't have the right stroke, like literally like just go technical on tennis. If you don't know how to hit it with like top spin at all, there's only so hard you can hit it and still keep it in the court. Once you learn the proper stroke, you can beat the shit out of it and still keep it in the court. Right? You have to learn that technique first before you can do anything else. And at first, that's all you can focus on because it's really, really hard to hit the ball the right way. But then you get to a point where you're pretty good at that. And now you can start being like, okay, I'm going to hit it the right way and I'm going to hit it to the proper side of the court. And then you can be like, okay, I'm going to hit the right way and I'm also going like, to hit it to the proper side and then I'm going to look at where the other guy is. Right? But you can't start looking at where your opponent is on the court until you can hit the ball correctly. Right? You need the fundamental skill before you can even start having the more advanced skill. It's the same thing in game. Right? What are the fundamental skills in game? Fundamental skill of game is just being able to walk up and keep talking. Right? Once you can do that, then you can walk up and keep talking and show a little bit of interest. Right? Once you can do that, you can walk up and keep talking, show a little bit of interest, and actually pay attention to what she's giving you and layer the next step on it and the next step on it. Right? And so what happens is, you learn game as a skill. And each new, each new skill you internalize, once it becomes a habit, then you free up your brain completely to hit a completely new level. Right? And so a lot of guys, they're at this level of like kind of intermediate where they're focused on, they're all focused on themselves. Right? They're completely focused on what do I do? What do I feel? What do I say? You know what the advanced level of game is? It's not being focused on yourself anymore. It's being focused on her. Right? But in a proactive way. Here's, a, kind of a, here's a, a great way to think about game. Most guys are thinking about their feelings and the girl's actions. So they're like, here's what I want from the girl, so I'm gonna try and make myself feel this way. Right? It actually should be the opposite. You should be paying attention to the girl and thinking, what would I like the girl to feel? What would be a great experience for her? Right? Being actually attuned to what she's feeling, attuned to what she's thinking, and attuned to what would be the, the ideal thing to have happen next, and then you shouldn't be thinking about your emotions. Your emotions should just be in check. And then you, all you're thinking about in terms of yourself is your actions. So you're taking your actions to get the emotions from her rather than your emotions to get the actions from her. Right? Because your emotions is like, it's in your own head, it's very needy, it's very like attaching your ego to the result, it's not very good. Focusing on her actions is very outcome dependent, manipulative, even a little bit creepy. But if you can shift it around, where you're like, I'm focused on giving her an amazing experience, and I, I'm not worried about my own emotions, I'm just taking the right actions for that. Now you're completely value offering, you're completely leading, and you're focused on what's important, and you're actually calibrated and attuned to the girl. That's the fundamental shift from intermediate to advanced, right? It's getting outside of thinking about yourself and into thinking about her and just trusting yourself, right? So in any case, what you need to do though is you need to go through that level of skills the same way you'd learn tennis or any other sport, you learn the basic skill and then once that becomes second nature, then you can learn the more advanced skill and the more advanced skill. All right, um, what I wanna do with you guys right now, very quickly, uh, everybody stand up, we're gonna do a quick set of exercises and there's a very specific reason for these exercises. So what I want you to do is get into groups of three or four. All right, so let's talk about how to actually learn game. How do you guys wanna go about getting better? 
Well, here's what I want to think, have you think about. If you were 10 out of 10 at opening, um, 7 out of 10 at hooking, um, 6 out of 10 at getting numbers, 3 out of 10 at following up on your numbers, and 8 out of 10 on your dates, how good is your game? 3 out of 10, right? Unless you know how to pull, in which case you might avoid the number thing, right? But as far as getting numbers and following up, that, that sequence in your game is 3 out of 10. Because you are only as good as your limiting factor. You're only as good as your limiting variable. Does that make sense? So let's say that guy that's like 3 out of 10 on the numbers, um, instead of being nine out of ten, uh, like 8 out of 10 on hooking, gets to 8.5 out of 10. How much is that going to improve his game? Or at least his results in game? How much? Like none at all. Or basically none at all. Almost nothing, okay? That's very important to realize. Because a lot of guys that go out and they're like, you're working on game as this like monster endeavor where you're working on 10 different things at once and trying to perfect everything. That's not smart. It's not smart for two reasons. Reason number one is if you work on your limiting factor, that's where you're gonna see the fastest results, right? And A, it's nice to see results, it's fun for you, it's good for you. Um, and then also, when you see results, you get more experiences, you get more entitlements, and there's this upward spiral of a lot of good things happening for you. So it's very, very important to work on your constraints, your constraining variable, um, so that you get to see those results. There's also one other very important reason, though, which is this. If you're constrained by, like, say you're really bad at like, your text game, right? and then you get a little bit better at like closing for the number or whatever, how are you even gonna know if you got better? Because your results aren't actually gonna show it. There's gonna be almost no change in your results, so you don't even know if you got better or worse. If you adjust something in some other area, and it doesn't make a difference in your results, how do you know if that was a smart adjustment or not? It's almost impossible. Your brain literally can't figure out if you're improving or not, you're just in this state of confusion. Does that make sense? Does everybody get that? Right? So if you're not working on the thing that's actually holding you back, you're not only wasting your time, but you're also possibly confusing yourself. You're possibly thinking you're improving and you're not. You're possibly implementing bad habits. It's just a, a way to never get better. It's not just slowing you down. It's actually preventing you from improving. Right? So here's what I would suggest. Right? Here's how you learn game. First, you go out. You hit the field. That's the most important thing. You have to go out because you need reference experiences. Okay? And then what's going to happen is you're going to figure out what is, what is your constraint. What is the thing holding you back? Right? What is it? And then you have a theory on it. Okay? You have a theory that this is where I'm weakest. Once you have that, now that mountain of pickup knowledge that like, is confusing and overwhelming you don't have time for, now it can actually help you. Until you've gone out in the field and until you've determined where your sets are falling apart though, all that knowledge and pickup is useless. Right? Once you have figured it out, now you can come up with a theory for why you're getting the results you are, and that means you can try something out, you can test it. Once you try it and test it, you're gonna very quickly see is it working or not, okay? And then once you see that it is working, it has improved your game, that's when you can go back and figure out what your next limiting factor is, right? So that's what it is, basically. You never, ever, ever can use, well, you really can't use theory until you've figured out what particular piece of theory you need. Right? Getting theory blindly is not only not going to help you, it might even set you back. Okay? So it's field first, then theory, try a bunch of things out for that theory, and then once you find the one that works, then and only then you move on to the next thing. Alright, so that's something you do on your own. That is something you could do completely on your own is go through that process. The issue though is it might take a really long time. Right? And so Here's where it's important to get good coaching. Because there's a couple areas where you're gonna be kind of messed up. First thing is sometimes you have a non-obvious solution. Let's say for example your problem is that you're getting a lot of flakes in your text game. Right? You're getting a lot of flakes in your text game. So it would make sense to go look at your text game. And you could improve your text game in a lot of different ways. But there's a very good chance that the reason you're getting a lot of flakes in your text game has something to do with your text game, but it may have even more to do with the way you ran your set. You may have run your set in a way that's tons and tons of value and you've already set up a frame that's already fucking your text game up before it starts. Right? And that's very hard for you to know unless you find someone better than yourself who's already been through it. Right? So you could bang your head against the wall for a really, really long time or you could go talk to someone better than you and have them show it to you, tell it to you, etc. That's where the, the good pickup theory comes in. That's number one. 
The second thing is, remember we talked about leveling? Does everybody remember leveling? Right, where you're doing something that, that says that's a, an 8 out of 10 behavior? Well, if you're doing something that's leveling you and it's been working, right? You're doing an 8 out of 10 behavior and all the 7s are loving it, and then you're trying to get the 9s and 10s and it's not working, it's going to be very, very hard for you to identify that behavior because you've actually gotten positive feedback of that behavior. Your brain is actually 